Hey guys, hope all is well. New video here today on five insider tricks with just working in the audio regions inside Logic X here. Um, majority of them are more of hotkeys, quick, you know, a quicker look on, you know, chopping something or flexing um, and going through certain modes just a bit quicker. You know, there's a lot of um, hidden stuff in Logic, just like there is in any DAW. Once you find it, you know, and you get used to it, you love it. So that's why I want to show a simple um, about five of them today to go through. The first one is the scissor um, option. Now, what people tra traditionally have, as you guys know, the Logic users, you can use two different tools here. You can hit T to drop down the menu anywhere. Um, so when I hold uh, command down on my keyboard, I can open up my scissor tool at any time. But the cool thing I want to show is when I'm going through loops, for example, we just have a hi-hat loop here. Sometimes when I go through loops, I'd like to take a certain section from there or take, um, you know, maybe a quarter um, of this section, which would be in here, or maybe I want to take a half of this, you know, one loop, I want to just take this, or maybe vice versa over here, right? So sometimes instead of just sitting here and hacking away at each one, you guys can program this or scissor um, with option to then grab it and cut each section. So for example, if I want to take like this area here, right? We know we could just take this. Now we have the section, right? But the thing I want to show is if I were to now set this over here, I could now hold down option as I have my um, scissors open here, I can hold down option. You see the plus come up. It's going to chop it all into that quarter that I wanted. So it breaks up here, here, and here. So the reason this would be useful is now I can double down and I could put this. Uh, let me just go back to my pointer tool. I can put this on a different channel. I could throw this on a different channel and just take maybe this section, right? And then maybe glue it in here, take this section here, and you can start manipulating the audio into your own loop. Right, so this is the reason I want to point out that quick scissor um, uh, function there in audio is because majority of people don't know about it. Um, if you do, then it's awesome. I know it's a simple one, but a lot of people that I work with in Logic don't even know that. Usually you'll just go like this and you're done, right? But it's great to be able to chop it up into multiple. You know, even if you want to go smaller in certain sections, um, you know, if I even did a smaller section, you can to just get down to like, slicing uh, loops extremely quick. Cause sometimes you'll sit here and go like this, keep going like this and, and take time to do that, right? Well, you can set it to just do it automatically like that very easy. So that's just a, the first one I wanted to go through. Now the second one is a simple, just reverse trick. So if we have this, um, this load up here, this build, Nine out of 10 times when I'm doing a buildup, let's call measure two would be the start where we would start it. I always like to bounce in place the first hit, the first on the one of that buildup that affects whatever it could be. And I'll bounce in place. And for me, it's control B. And then it's just going to make a new audio right below it. I'm just going to turn that back on. I always love, you know, nine out of 10 times I'll reverse this instant right here. So we can go down here, functions reverse just to use that first hit to introduce that audio clip. And I'll always, you know, carry that out. I can use it over here and so on. But always make sure you guys are fading. You know, I'll go to fade here and we'll zoom in. And I can always make sure it's not hitting too hard there. The transient sometimes can get a little messy. So you just want to make sure that's kind of um, the attack and transient is pretty, you know, precise. Now, again, I know that's simple, but I want to point these out because trust me, you guys, I've seen so many really, really talented producers that are missing some sort of quick hotkeys or just um, tools that are right in front of us. Because when I first started on the interface, I knew everything was there in front of me. I started learning it all, but there's cool hidden stuff just like every other DAW. You know, I've worked in Ableton, FL, you name it. I've used all of them and they're all really good um, DAWs. It's just how you use functions to speed up your workflow and get through things a little quicker. Let's move to number three now, the flex slicing. So if we now go into flex mode, and we go down to slicing. 
So what I want to do, why I want to use this one, for example, we're going to um, put this together with number one. So let's go to, um, let's zoom in here. And what I want to show, if we look at number one, let me just turn on both. This is our hi-hat option. If you zoom in here, you'll notice the, um, let's just call the timing. The hi-hat is coming in quicker than your um, Titan perk loop down here, but it's on tempo, right? 100 BPM, 100. So it has a slight swing, not a bad thing at all, but some of us might want to tighten that up. And instead of really dragging things left and right, really trying to lock it on, because you guys can see at the top, we're going by these little ticks right here, right? Instead of doing that, go up to the main one that's on tempo, which is our hi-hat. We're going to turn on flex and we're going to go to slicing. And you guys can see it opened up that gray line right there, right? You know, Logic's telling you that's where it's hitting. So what this can do now, again, instead of doing this and trying to get it precise, all you literally need to do is click and drag up. So what it's going to do, Logic is going to tell you it's trying to match the transient from the top one to your bottom one. So when I click and drag up, it's going to snap right to the closest point right there. So it, you can see that yellow line that's added in again, do it here. I'll go right up and it clicks it right over. This speeds up my process so much guys. And I think it's going to do the same for you. I find so many loops that maybe have a pre shift clap in there or something, and maybe you don't want it. You just simply grab the point, click up and it's right there. So the loops match up perfectly. So that's a real uh, flex slicing um, for number three. So let me just put these back. That one I love guys. If you're unaware of that one, it's pretty huge. And again, the whole point of this video here is showing some simple inside stuff, but also to uh, quicken your workflow. So number four is a vocal loop. Who that looking at us? And let's just put something behind Who that looking at us? Who that looking at us? Let's just make this wider. So duplicate it down three, uh, excuse me, two times and lower these two here, bring them way down, pan left and right, just like as you would in any vocal. Who that looking at us? Who that Sounds no different, right? Sounds very similar. Just go to your simple pitch shifter 100%, keep it on vocal and semitones the same. Go 15 on this one. Who that looking at us? Who that and then go to the next one and let's duplicate this, but let's go the opposite direction. Copy, paste, and now let's go negative 15. Now watch the width. Again, let's lower them a bit more. We don't want um, there to be too much clashing. This is going to create a chorus detuned effect. Who that looking at us? Who that looking at us? Who that looking at us? So big difference from the first one and that's slight off. Let's just bring this to negative 64 and you guys don't need um, the pan to be exactly the same. Let's say we did a negative 50 over here on my left side and maybe not even that far a plus 30. Who they looking at us? Who they look so what you get is a slight off um, feeling to the to the left and right. But that's it's it's a good thing, you know, getting that off set feeling of the left and right, um, what we can call a harmony layer in a way is not a bad thing. So once you dial in that setting to what feels right, you can get more width to the vocal. And let's play without it. So a simple trick, mess with the sense. You know, um, if you want to go further and really detune it, just be careful with the mixing level. You can make a, you know, perfectly in tune vocal sound really out of tune. So be careful with that one. But that's number four, simple pitch correction, um, pitch shifting trick. Now the flex BPM warp. Number five, what I'm talking about is taking a loop that's out of the BPM that your DAW is in. So we've been working in 100, we'll maintain that. But as you guys can see, tighten hi-hat loop, 150 BPM. So obviously you can flex it real quick and pull it over, but before you flex it, go to its original BPM up here, 150, and you can see it went right over to one to nine, so it's perfectly in tempo. So now all I need to do is hit flex and then go back to my original BPM, 100, and now it snapped it perfectly. And I'll usually throw this on monophonic as a rhythm piece, tightens everything up. Now, if I want to double time and make it extremely quick, we would just do this. And you guys can hear the 
metronome. And again, if we did the double time here. So this is um, uh, just a simple one too. The flex mode, you guys can obviously drag stuff back and forth. But as you said, saw when we started with it, 150, you know, it's something over here completely off out of whack. You know, sometimes you to get it here and perfectly, sometimes is not effective. So all you have to do is go to its original BPM before you hit flex. So we went to 150. So it extended it to 150 and it was perfectly in time. Then we hit flex and went back to 100 BPM that we're working with all this. And that flex mode warps it perfectly in time for you guys. Then you can just go through different modes to uh, depending on if it's percussion, a vocal, etc. So that's it for today, guys. That's five quick inside looks dealing with audio and Logic X. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys soon. Thank <laughs> you.